The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. Let us then confess our sins to the Lord and trust in his mercy for pardon. Gracious God, forgive us our sins. We admit and confess that we have strayed from your holy law and rebelled against you in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We deserve no good thing from you. But for the sake of Jesus Christ, we are bold to ask for what you have promised, forgiveness, light, and life. Renew us by your spirit, that we may live in victory over sin, Satan, and death, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. My dear children, if anyone does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the Lord, and by the authority of the resurrected Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. You may be seated for the next hymn. first reading for today is from Acts chapter 3. And what we're going to be doing for the next three weeks is reading the full account that begins at chapter 3 verse 1, but continues through Acts chapter 4 as well. So we're going to be doing this story here um, in three parts uh, today and then the next two weeks. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day 
to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave him them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. And then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us? as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life. But God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. This is the word of our Lord. Just to get the timing down here, this probably happened two or three months or so after Jesus' resurrection. So Jesus rose from the dead and then he appeared on earth for about 40 days and then he ascended into heaven. Ten days after that was Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles and, and, and uh, empowered the entire Christian church. And then this account of this man being healed is the next thing recorded in Acts in, in the book of Acts. Uh, so it's right after, sometime right after Pentecost. So like I said, two or three months after Jesus' resurrection. So that becomes significant as we'll talk about in a little bit. But for right now, from the Holy Gospel, from Luke chapter 24, we're going back to Easter Sunday. Uh, last week we talked about the appearances of Jesus in the morning to the women, to Mary and so on. But then later on in the day, he appeared to these two men as they walked on the road to Emmaus. And then he also appeared that evening to his disciples, uh, to his disciples there in that room behind locked doors. So that's what we read about now. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Jesus said to them, how foolish you are 
and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us. It's nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. This is the word of our Lord. And now would you please, as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the next hymn.
and grace to you and peace from God our Father, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In both of the readings for today, there were people who wanted something, but got a whole lot more than what they ever imagined. Okay? In the first reading, which was about the man who was crippled, what did he want? He wanted money. He wanted money. What did he get? I knew you were going to answer healing. I set you up. (laughs) Yes, he got healed. There's no doubt about it. And that certainly is greater than what he had wanted. But what was the greatest thing that he got that day? He got introduced to Jesus Christ. Jesus, the one who has risen from the dead, was revealed to him in the miracle of the healing. We'll come back to that one. Let's just go to the second one and get it out of the way first. We'll, come, we'll talk about that one too. In the second story about the two men walking on the way to Emmaus, what did they want? I'm not hearing much. <laughs> they wanted support. They were sad. They were incredibly depressed at what had happened. When Jesus came up to them and started talking with them, it says they looked to the ground, their faces downcast. They were indeed without hope. They even used that word. We had hoped that he was going to be the one, but now all of that was gone. So yes, they wanted hope. They wanted comfort. They wanted to be strengthened. They were hurting their dear friend. The one that they looked to as the hope of Israel was dead. But then they also had heard rumors about angels who said that Jesus was alive. So in another sense, what else did they want that day? They wanted to see Jesus. If he was alive, they wanted to see him. Okay, now the question though is, what was the greater thing that they got that day? They got a Bible lesson. They got pointed to the scriptures to look in God's revealed word for everything that they were hoping for. Yes, they're going to see Jesus. They'll see Jesus at the end, at supper time, in the room when he's breaking bread, he's going to be revealed to them. They're going to see him a second time later on when they go back to Jerusalem and Jesus appears in the room where they all have gathered. But the greater gift that they got was to look at the scripture and to know that that word of God reveals Jesus to them. Okay, let's talk about both of them. I've got to go back one at a time. I got too confusing otherwise. Let's go back to the the healing of of the crippled man. Remember, he was crippled from birth. He was crippled from birth, which meant he never walked a single day in his life. And the reading is going to tell us eventually, we didn't hear it today, but he's 40 years old. He's 40 years old. Now, the fact that he's 40, first of all, tells us something amazing. He's got an incredible family. Or he's got very, very dedicated friends. Because wherever he goes, he's got to be carried. They don't have wheelchairs Okay, don't have anything like that. Don't have buses that'll pick you up and travel and move you around. He has to be carried everywhere he goes. This is amazing, the kind of support that he has and certainly a blessing from God about what he had. Now, think about this particular day. And it wasn't just this day. His friends did this every day, except Saturday, which was the Sabbath. They did this every day. We don't know where this man lived. But he lives somewhere probably in Jerusalem because that's where they are. But he's not just leaving his house and going out and sitting on the street there and begging. He is being taken into the temple courts. And not just into the temple courts, but into the inner temple courts. This is a big distance. This is impressive to have someone carry a man probably on a stretcher 
or a litter as it's sometimes called, carry him that way, two or three, four men carrying him every single day. The temple area was huge, was huge. I forget exactly how many acres and acres it was. And the first thing you would have to do is you'd have to go through a gate to get to the court of the Gentiles. The Gentile court was where anyone could go, and that was huge. Thousands and thousands of people could gather there. Then you would go farther, you'd go through another gate, and you'd go to the court of the Jewish women, where Jewish women and men could go, okay? That was smaller, but still impressive. Then you would go through a final gate to get to the court where the Jewish men could go. That's the gate that we're talking about here. These men took him to the innermost gate where the faithful Jewish men would gather several times a day, particularly at the time of prayer. This was a prime spot to be begging. If you want to get the faithful people who take their faith seriously, this is the spot to sit. And this man has this crippled, we're not even told his name, by the way. I wish I had a name, it'd be a whole lot easier. But this crippled man, we're not even told his name. He has friends that take him to this prime location every single day. So he's laying there on his mat, and he's begging like he always does. And that's then when Peter and John walk by. And you remember what was said. He's asking them for money, but Peter and John say, silver and gold I don't have. But what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. Now before we talk about the miracle, that phrase, in the name of, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth is very significant. It's a phrase that does not just denote Here's the power by which this is going to happen. Or here's the authority by which this is going to happen. The real emphasis is, I am going to show you Jesus by what is going to happen. In the name of Jesus, the name of the true God, you are going to receive his blessing. You are going to know that he loves you. You are going to know that he cares for you. You're going to know that he's alive. Now remember, this is two or three months after death and resurrection of Jesus. This is all still top of everyone's mind. And now Peter is saying, in the name of Jesus, the living Jesus, I'm going to show him to you. And then he says, walk. And now Jesus is going to be revealed. Peter reached out his right hand and grabbed the man's right hand to help him up. He had never been standing before in his life. But he got up. Instantly, his, his legs were healed, whatever it was that was wrong with him. And not only did he stand up, but immediately he began to walk and jump and leap all over the place, which was amazing. It was amazing when you think about it. Anyone who's not walked for so long doesn't get up and jump and leap around. You've got to take it careful. Because you got to learn to keep your balance. Yes, man, it didn't need any of that kind of stuff. It was full. It was complete. It was joyous. Then, remember, they're going up to the time of prayer. It's time for prayer. So Peter and John go with this man. And this man is hanging on to them, maybe grabbing on, to, not to hold himself up, but to, he is so grateful for what they've done. That he's not, he doesn't want to lose them. He's hanging on to them. But he's going to go right into the temple area when it's time for prayer. But he can't just stand there like everyone else is. He's got to keep on walking. This is too joyous. This is too joyous. He's not only just walking around while everyone else is praying. He's jumping. He's leaping around. He's acting like a crazy man. He's so excited. As soon as the time of prayer was over, crowds started coming around him. And Peter and John took him a little bit away over to what was called Solomon's Colonnade. The Colonnade was a huge covered porch area, great big pillars, lots of them, big, big area. And now everyone was coming, everyone was coming because they knew this man. They had seen him over and over and over again. They recognized him. They knew he was 40, but now he was walking. He hadn't walked his entire life. And that's then when Peter 
took the request of that single man for money to not only reveal Jesus to him, but to reveal the name of Jesus, meaning the love and the glory, the power, the fact that he's alive to everyone there in the temple courts that day. This is amazing too. Peter, who on Monday, Thursday, right, denied even knowing Jesus to a couple of servant girls, now is talking to everyone about this Jesus. And he makes it real clear. He said to them, he said, why are you looking at us? Like, by our power, we're able to do any of this. No, it's in the name of, and he uses that same phrase, it's in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And he's the one I'm going to reveal to you now. You've already seen him revealed. You've already seen him revealed in the power of this healing. And many of them, of course, remembered what Jesus was all about and the miracles that he did, the healings that he did, the resurrections that he performed. And Peter then, very specifically, identified him as the true God, the true servant who had come as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the fulfillment of the promised scriptures had come and was right in their streets. But they had crucified him. And Peter got pretty bold about it, pretty direct. And he accused them of the wrong that they did in their rejection of Jesus. You crucified him. You nailed him to a tree. You handed him over to Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate wanted to let him go because Pontius Pilate knew he was innocent. But you, you kept on yelling and crying for his blood. Peter was pretty blunt. And then was the clincher. But God raised him from the dead. God raised him from the dead. He's alive. He's alive. And it's by his power, it's by faith and trusting in him that this man stands before you healed. You see, the man asked for something. Money. He thought that was the thing that he needed. There's always a cool thing about prayer. If we're smart enough, or maybe you should say, if we're faithful enough to let God really answer what we really need as opposed to what we might think we need. You know, how often we think we've got it all figured out what we really need. God, and you better give me this answer, otherwise I'm gonna doubt that you really even care. And a, a, a story like this, an account like this, shows that God hears our prayers, but he gets at and knows what we really need. And we have to be open. We have to be open to the answers that he gives. It would be so stupid, wouldn't it, if this man would have said, hey, I didn't get any money. What a bummer. God doesn't care about me. <laughs> You've you got to be open to the answers that God gives. And most of the time, he gives greater things than we can ever imagine. This man was introduced to his Savior. And not only him, everyone who was there were told about Jesus. Now, that story is going to continue yet. I'm stopping there right now, okay? But there's more, all right? Quite a bit more. You got to come the next two Sundays in a row in order to hear all of it, okay? All right, now I got to go to the next one. Luke chapter 24, road to Emmaus. Okay, now again, we got some people who wanted something. And like we already said, they wanted comfort. They wanted comfort. They were very, very sad. A tragic death came out of the blue. Came out of the blue. No one expected on Wednesday. No one expected even on Thursday that on Friday, Jesus was going to be dead. Now, if they had been in the scripture, if they had been listening to Jesus' words, it would not have caught them by surprise. But they didn't. And so these two men were incredibly distressed. Like I said, they stood there with their faces downcast. Their hopes had been dashed. 
They wanted to be comforted. They also wanted to see Jesus. There's no doubt about that. That's why they told this stranger, who of course is Jesus, told this stranger about the angels and the reports of the women where they had heard that he was alive. That's then again when Jesus answers their request with something greater. Now, if he wanted to, he could have right then, right without even walking two more steps, said, here I am. And he could have showed them his hands and his feet and his side. He could have proven to them, and it would have been wonderful. It would have been the exact answer to the prayer that they wanted. But God knew they needed something more. More, yes, more than even seeing Jesus. Oh, this is going to become so important for us, isn't it? You can figure out that application real quick. Because we haven't seen Jesus either. But we've got the same answer. The same answer that Jesus gave to those two men on the road to Emmaus. He said to them, how slow of heart you are to believe all that the prophets have spoken. He directed them to the scripture. This was their source of comfort. This was their encouragement. This was seeing Jesus. God's word is truth. And we are called to trust that revealed word. And so Jesus, so Jesus, they're, they're, on, a, they're on a walk, seven miles. And it's a, it's a leisurely stroll. This, this is taking several hours. And during that entire time, Jesus is going through the scripture. One event after another. Kind of like what we were doing during Lent with all those lamb themes, one after another. Understand the scripture, understand the scripture, because they reveal Jesus. And that's what, God, that's what Jesus did that day. Exactly what he talked about, I don't know. It'd be wonderful if the scriptures had indeed recorded for us the exact details of that Bible study. We can only imagine, not just imagine, we can go back into the scripture ourselves, starting with Genesis and going all the way through the minor prophets like we did during Lent as well. Go through them as well. And look, what does this tell us about Jesus? So many instances. Abraham and the Passover, Noah and King David, all of them talking about Jesus. Here's where, if you read my email today, this past week, or... You know about this. Here's a way to try to get at what that conversation was that these disciples had with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Here's a half hour DVD. Some of you already seen this. We had passed this out, oh, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years ago already. Um, but this is a, a half hour video uh, that gives to us, if you want to call that, fills in the detail. In a, in, a, in a human way of what Jesus would have talked about. We've got a whole bunch of these. A whole bunch of these are on that table in the back by the portals of prayer. Take one. Take one. Uh, look at it. Bring it back after you're done with it or give it to someone else. We don't care. It's not doing any good sitting on my shelf. Okay? Look at it. Look at it. Put the things together. See that the scripture reveals Jesus. Okay? I also, in the email that I sent out on Thursday uh, to everyone with the announcements, gave you a link to a YouTube presentation of this very same video. You don't even have to borrow this. You can just click that link and it'll take you immediately to YouTube and you'll be able to start watching this wherever, on whatever device you've got. You don't even need a DVD player, okay? It's right there. Look at it. Look at it. Today's the perfect day to do that. Okay, or sometime share with someone else and be blessed. These disciples, this Cleopas and this unnamed one, we don't even know, 
after finally Jesus showed himself to them in, at the supper meal, said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us as he revealed the scriptures to us? This is the power of the word of God, so specifically for us who have not seen Jesus. And we will not see Jesus until the day when the trumpet sounds and Jesus returns to this world. Until then, we live by the word of God. And that's a good thing. Do you remember what Jesus said when, you know, we're not doing Thomas this year, admittedly, I, but you remember the whole story with Thomas, right? Thomas, unless I see, unless I see, unless I put my fingers in the holes where his nails were, I'm not going to believe that he's alive. And then a week later, Jesus appears and said, Thomas, come here. <laughs> Get out your pinky. Get it out, because here's what you want. That's what you want? Okay. Now, here's the deal, Thomas. And for all people of all time, you believe, Thomas, because you saw. You know how it continues, right? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. How do you believe without seeing? You've got the word of God. That's why I say, these men... These men were hoping for something. They were hoping for comfort and encouragement. They were hoping to see Jesus. Jesus gave them something greater. He opened up the scriptures to them. That's why this is so very important. And why it's so important for you to know your scriptures. To open it up. To read it. To understand it. To grow in it. And don't, it's not a matter of comprehending everything all at once taking the small sections, bit by bit, piece by piece, and then the Holy Spirit working in us this wonderful revelation, the revelation of God's grace, his power, his victory, his forgiveness, his love, coming to us directly through Jesus. Everything in the scriptures about Jesus, and it's there in our hands. God's greatest of all gifts. So anyway, that's where we're at. They asked for something, but God gave them something greater. The Apostle Paul understood all that. And at the, at, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, he wrote this, and this is going to be our closing. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, the power of the word. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God is past all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We have a fairly lengthy prayer list here again today, so I'm going to let you remain seated for the prayers. Uh, this morning, we're going to say a prayer for the family of Nathan Dahl. Uh, Nathan is the nephew of Darlene Wilson. Uh, Darlene and Jim, they're here this morning. Uh, Nathan died on Thursday evening at the age of 40. Uh, he had come down with complications of the influenza B virus. That's all that it was. He started off with flu symptoms uh, last weekend. Uh, wasn't feeling all that great, but still went to everything. He went to work on Monday. Uh, and then by uh, Wednesday, when he was taken to the hospital, uh, shortly after he got to the hospital, his heart stopped beating twice. Uh, they put him on uh, special machines to keep the blood flowing and to give him oxygen and so on. Um, but finally, uh, it came to the point where the doctors were not able to do anything more. Uh, so he passed away on Thursday evening, like I said, at the age of 40. Uh, it happened that quickly. Uh, the influenza virus, uh, apparently settled in the lining around his heart, uh, just attacked that so vigorously uh, that there was nothing that could be done from a human point of view. Uh, so his funeral is going to be on Tuesday uh, in Dover uh, at the Methodist Church. Uh, he has a son, Preston, who's 10 years old, uh, and um, his parents, and of course Darlene and Jim, and it's a big family. We pray for all of them today. And then I received a phone call from Rose Buns. 
uh, saying that her mother is hospitalized and her health is failing uh, rapidly. Uh, she has um, uh, pneumonia as well as liver failure and a bunch of other things uh, as well. Uh, the doctors really do not expect her to survive much longer. We pray for Kathy Tordson today. Kathy's hip uh, went out again on Tuesday of this week. Uh, it's happened a number of times. Uh, she's now wearing another different kind of immobilizing brace uh, for the next six weeks. And then after that, they'll make a decision uh, if they have to do anything more with that hip. Doug Fine is doing very well. Uh, he is uh, home, went home already on Monday after he had heart mitral valve surgery. Um, but he's making very good progress. And uh, we certainly will see him here very soon. And he's still. It's going to take recovery time. There's no doubt about that. He's going to have to rest and recuperate, uh, but it's going well. And then we'll pray for the other people that we have said uh, in the past, uh, adding today Dolores Sensed, who is the mother of Jan Sampson. Um, Jan and Mike are here this morning. Um, she is, her mother, Dolores, is now receiving hospice care uh, at the Golden Living Center Whitewater in St. Charles. Would you bow your heads for a word of prayer? Dearest Jesus, how wonderful it is to know that when we ask for things, you hear and you answer. You answer by your grace and your power, <clears throat> most often even giving us greater blessings than what we had ever imagined. We see that happening in the scripture readings that we had for today, and we thank you, dear Jesus, that you continue to work that way in our lives today. We thank you very especially for the truth of your holy word revealed to us in the scriptures. It is your truth your truth that has come into this world. It reveals you in its fullness, prophesying the things that were to happen and then fulfilling those things and sharing the blessings of it all with us. It is your power to make all the difference in our lives, indeed, giving us life everlasting through faith. So bless us, help us to cherish your word, to read it, to take it to heart, and then open up that scriptures, dear God, to so many other people that they too may know the wonders of your love revealed in Jesus Christ. Today we pray for the family of Nathan Dahl, uh, especially Darlene and Jim Preston, uh, Orv and Janelle, his parents, and, and all those who mourn his death. So sudden, so fast, so tragic, we are indeed in shock. And yet, it is exactly in this situation when you, dear Jesus, come with the only comfort, with the only hope, with the only peace that can be given. The fact that you have come into this world suffering those very same things, but then rising from the dead in victory. And so we pray that you will come to those who mourn Nate's death, that you'll come to them with your peace, with your Holy Spirit, and help them to know that you are with them in this time of sorrow, and that the victory you have promised is for all who believe. Lord God, we also ask for your blessed day be with Rose Bunn's mother uh, as she is hospitalized. We truly pray that as her health appears to be declining, you will bless her, that you'll keep her in your wonderful, loving arms and hold her tight and give her the victory that you have promised to her since the time that she was brought into your kingdom through baptism. Lord God, we also ask for your grace to be with Gertrude Holzerland, Norm Schultz, and Dolores Sensed as they're all now receiving hospice care we pray that these days can be days that are filled with your peace, with your truth, with your comfort, with the fact that you, dear Jesus, love them so much that you embrace them in carrying them through these days and bring them the victory that you have promised to all who believe. Continue to bless Kathy Tordson as she's uh, dealing with the hip issue. We hope that that recovers well and, and she's healed nicely. Continue to be with Doug Fine as he's doing very well and making good progress. Continue to make him strong and enable him soon to return to his regular activities. Be with Bob House uh, as he remains paralyzed following that skiing accident. Uh, difficult situation, but dear God, we pray that day by day you will bless them with your grace. Be also with Dale Meldahl and Lyndon Luke, Dalia Norgrant and Angela Lewis, those people who have cancer, and all the other people that we name in our hearts who are ill. We commend them all to your care and keeping knowing that you are the victorious Lord who has brought victory into this world. We pray all this in your name. Amen. We will continue our service now with the offering. Uh, during the offering, if you've not signed the friendship registers, please do that. And we are celebrating Holy Communion, so do check your communion attendance as well. Thank you. And please stand for the preface to Holy Communion. Beloved in the Lord, on this joyful morning, we are gathered here to celebrate the glorious resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to receive again his body and blood in the sacrament of the altar. 
The Lord be with you. Jesus, the Paschal Lamb, was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. He was crucified for our transgressions and raised for our justification. In his resurrection, he brought life and immortality to light. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Therefore, we join our voices to praise in, the, to, in praise to the crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ. With all the faithful around the world, with all the saints in heaven, and with all the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we give glory to him who loves us and comes to us in grace. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And let us pray. Dearest Jesus, amid shouts of Alleluia, we give you thanks for offering your life as a sacrifice for our sin. Today you are pleased to give us your body and blood in the bread and wine of this sacred meal. By your Spirit, help us to receive these gifts in repentance, faith, and devotion. Through them, forgive us, renew us, and strengthen us to live the glory of your resurrection today and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. stand for the dismissal. Now may this body which was given for you and this blood which was shed for you strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Christ is risen.